Are you looking for the best deals on tools for crafters this holiday season? Well, in th or are you just struggling to find tools that um, are, are you need to pursue your DIY passion? Well, in this video, I'm going to be sharing 18 must-have tools for crafters, plus two things you can do that'll basically give you x-ray vision so that you know when you're getting a real deal or when it is a scam. So we're going to jump right here into the first one, and we're going to be going through a lot of cutting tools uh, for our first set of deals. This first one is a Task Star cordless electric scissors. These are really great for cutting cardboard, and I use them all the time when I'm making like rough cuts because they'll have big pieces of cardboard laying around, and you can see they'll cut through that pretty quickly. They don't do great with like thick sheets of cardboard, but um, other than that, uh, they really speed things up. I did a review video on these. You can look it up on my channel. Uh, and after doing that review, I've actually enjoyed using them even more. So I recommend picking these up. They're $25 here. I don't think they're usually $45. Uh, and we'll get into that later. But uh, so it's not really 43% off. They're more like probably 30 most of the time. Um, and uh, yeah, they speed it up. They have a little button and then that little blade will pull you along through your cardboard sheets. But also if you do a lot of fabric cutting or other things, they can make really good rough cuts because sometimes I'll have these really big sheets of cardboard that um, are hard to work with and it's a pain to cut them all the way through with a knife so you just cut them a little smaller you can put them on your desk and then work with them uh, but the next thing number two is our exacto knives and having a good set of exacto knives really makes crafting a lot more enjoyable hey sandy rose thank you for uh, being on the live stream and um, these are the ones I've used pretty much all of the time I like having two different colors because um, then you know what knife you're using and like you can swap out the blade. So if you have two different ones, you don't have to constantly switch if you want to use one of these other blades. But as for me, I'm almost always using these number 11 blades, which are the most common. And if you ever buy a hobby knife, I recommend making sure that it's compatible with those number 11 blades because they're the cheapest and most common. If you ever get a knife that isn't compatible with number 11, you're going to probably end up spending more money on getting those like fancier blades. So there's that, but also the reason I really like this kit is it comes with this little six inch ruler and it doesn't seem like much, but um, it just saves you time in having to buy an extra ruler. And this one doesn't have a cork backing, which means it sits really close to the thing that you're marking. So I have a, a large ruler with a cork backing that we'll share later, but when you have a little one like this, it helps you just make little mic marks and it slides around a lot because it doesn't have a uh, cork backing. There's nothing that will help it like stay stuck on like so it slides a lot but it's so small that it still works out pretty well if this doesn't seem like the option for you or you know you're only going to use those number 11 blades and don't want the ruler here's another sale uh this 74 pack hobby knives you can have four of these hobby knives which is mostly useful if you are like got multiple people who might want to use those hobby knives or keep them in multiple places um, but it comes with a bunch of extra blades which is nice all in the number 11 um and if you wanted like more of an upgraded knife, you could spend about the same amount of money, but just get a single knife with no blade refills. This Fiskar one, I've heard pretty good things about. I want to get it myself, but I have not gotten it yet because uh, I don't have infinite money. And um, yeah, it, it seems like a pretty good crafting knife that you could upgrade to. It's just it doesn't come with those extra blades. And then Slice is got a couple things on sale they're typically a much more expensive knife i also have not personally used slice products but if you're really worried about like cutting yourself with your knife um or you want or you work a little bit more with paper crafts because a lot of the slice knives have a little bit of a shorter blade then um you might want to go with an option like this. This is their auto retractor, so you basically have to hold this green thing down while you're cutting. Um, it's like for cutting thinner stuff. You can also get uh, the three position manual one, um, and then that one's a little bit manual. Slice is a pretty cool brand though, and they use these ceramic blades which take a lot longer to get dull. And they also, um, yeah, they, their products are like nice and smooth and nice and, and feel good in your hands and are a little bit more like precise premium things. But also you're going to end up paying a lot more for some of those products. Uh, if you're going to get like a utility knife from Slice, you might pay, you're going to pay a lot more than if you just got like a basic utility knife with metal blades. 
And also, when you end up having to replace those blades, it's going to be a lot more to get them from Slice, uh, although they say their blades last many times longer. Um, and also, if you end up needing to clean your blades, Slice might be a good option if you get blades that you're cutting something and get dirty because they are like finger-safe blades, uh, which I don't even really know how it works, but they don't really cut your hands if you slide them along it. And now here's another cool product if you're doing a lot of cardboard cutting. Uh, this is the cannery cardboard cutter which makes really rough cuts it's got a little saw blade on it and um yeah it's good for those and it can also like curve because you're sawing through the cardboard it's not going to cut it like butter and it's a different tool than like a regular cardboard cutter a uh, regular utility knife so it's going to be good at cutting different kinds of things and uh, you might want to pick that up. It's $8, so it's a little bit more expensive. But um, these are all deals under $25, so we're really at the low end right now. We'll go up to some more expensive tools later. But I like being able to find those deals that are at the low end because once you start stacking all of these tools up, it can get expensive. Um, but if we are just meeting, my name is Eli Tennant, and it is my passion to help you make your ideas into reality with cardboard. And... Um, I am the creator of the five-step craft framework and more importantly for you in the description I've got a link to all of that and a, a couple other videos all the resources that I have made over time are collected there for you so you can check that out as well as all of the tools in this video but for our last knife here we have this kata utility knife set which utility knives are great if you're making bigger cuts or want a little bit more stability while you're cutting because um sometimes with the like exacto knives you can't get enough force on that on your hand and you really just want to be able to use a utility knife where you can get a good grip these ones are a little bit bigger than the one i'm holding right here and they also keep the blades inside of the handle which is great if you ever end up using your util utility knife and you go like doing like actual like outdoor work and stuff and your blades get dull you can swap them out you don't have to worry as much about having a place to store those blades these ones are pretty much the cheapest um and this one here is the fixed blade where you just slide the blade in and out and then here's the folding type uh they work in uh two different ways but uh then lastly we've got our scissors here this is our last cutting implement then we'll i'll share with you some ways to avoid getting scammed in bad deals so these scissors are from scott so a pretty reputable brand they're not on a black friday sale here on amazon but they are down to four dollars these are a little bit shorter with the blade which i kind of like because when you're cutting through thicker materials like cardboard and stuff um the shorter blade means you're not the tips of the knife are not um the tips of the scissors are not gonna like get as much leverage put onto them and so you'll have a little bit more control with those shorter blades and uh, it'll be a pretty nice cutting experience um scotch also has some blades that they call titanium i'm not totally sure what that means maybe they're titanium coated or maybe they actually do have titanium scissors down there on their website for like 10 bucks um, which would be super cool. So you can check out Scotch. They've got a bunch of things on sale. But if you're shopping for Black Friday deals, then you need to be off on Amazon. You need to become an Amazon Prime member. And you'll be able to get a lot of deals without becoming a Prime member. But I have a Prime account and a not Prime Amazon account. I got two accounts. And um, if I go there on there with my non-prime account, sometimes the prices of products will actually straight up just be more expensive uh, or you won't get as good of a sale. And you'll also run into situations like this where you go to buy a product and it'll say it's on sale, but then it says a prime exclusive deal. So you're not going to be able to actually get that $4.79 price on whatever product this was because it's a prime exclusive deal. And so you can start a 30-day free Prime trial. I've got a link in the top of the description. And that way you can get all of these Black Friday deals um, really easily. And you won't have any problems with that free trial of Amazon. Plus then you get like all their movies and music and perks stuff as well with Amazon Prime. 
But uh, to get x-ray vision when you're shopping so that you don't get scammed, you can use Honey. You've probably heard about this extension before, but basically when you go onto a product page, we'll like look right here, you can see my Honey extension is adding a little pop-up right here. I almost never get deals from it like people advertised Honey can do. Like they're like, oh my gosh, I saved so much money with Honey because it like gave me deals and searches the internet all right it almost never finds deals for me but it does give me this little price changes thing right here it says three price changes and over on these scissors it says there were 10 price changes which means the price has changed recently this is a different product with six price changes but you can see over time the product price goes up and down and you can tell if you're buying it at a good time or a bad time or if maybe you should wait a couple weeks for it to go back down so it's at the lowest price ever but you can see the price was jacked up a little bit before it went on sale that way the discounted price looks a lot better because like oh it's 40 percent off when normally it would only be like 20 percent off if it was at the old price right here and so you can install the honey extension i'm not getting paid for this advertisement or anything uh, i just use it occasionally um but then also camel 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 does basically the same thing i know it's like why would you name your website camel 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 but uh i guess it, it means something um but you'll get a little chrome extension uh, a little pop-up right there and you can click it they call it the camelizer and it'll give you a price history. Now, the interesting thing is that these price histories are not always perfectly matched. So if you, we go back to Honey, that's this is the same product. This is the price history on Honey. This is the price history on Camel, 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 the green line. And so it's still discounted in the end at the same price. I have a feeling Honey's more accurate because the Camel one is kind of confusing me. Like, did the price really jump around that much? Or maybe one of them factors in like the discounts and one of them doesn't but what is interesting about the camelizer is it'll also be able to throw in third-party pricing so if i'm just looking at amazon i'll usually go with honey but if maybe i want to compare other prices you can see i could check the third-party price box right here and it shows me what buying third party would look like um third party used which is actually more expensive than the current price on amazon so it sort of searches around for those prices but if you are looking for the right kinds of crafting tools maybe you're getting started crafting and want to know what to buy i have a link right in the description you can get my free cardboard crafting starter guide i just updated it with all of the latest links and stuff to that guide so uh if you head down there you can pick that up for free to sort of see what tools I recommend for crafting and it's got it broken down into all the different categories so that if maybe you don't really care about like painting and finishing your stuff then you don't have to buy those products um, and it gives you some price ranges on there as well for different things so uh, feel free to pick that up in the description I would really appreciate that um, now next we're getting into some adhesives that are on sale this black friday and this is a set from scotch tape can actually be surprisingly expensive so you can see again this has six price changes right here um but um uh, they're giving you all these different tapes and if you didn't know scotch actually has different kinds of tape so all these different colors are different kinds of tape some of them are like wall safe and some of them are like able to like peel back off of paper without ripping it so um it gives you some different kinds of tape and not all of them are going to be the perfect thing for crafting but um they will be able to help you different areas around the house i know sometimes as crafters we want to like put something on the wall hang something up and it's good to have that wall safe tape to do that now my favorite kind of glue is hot glue so you can jump and grab uh, this Gorilla hot glue is on sale, but it is not a Black Friday sale. Um, so you can pick it up. $9 for 20 glue sticks is actually pretty good. Um, if you buy them in bulk, it isn't always even that cheap. Um, so actually bulk is a little bit cheaper than that. So, but Gorilla glue stick is a, is a good glue and I like these, these eight inch glue sticks are nice because you can like switch them out more if you don't use your glue that much but if you end up gluing a lot then maybe you want to go for some 10 inch glue sticks and these are the 0.43 diameter so they're for your large hot glue guns if you have a mini hot glue gun you're going to want to get a smaller hot glue and 
uh, yeah, that's where we're going to roll with that. They also have a bunch. You can buy like five packs at once on sale for Black Friday as well if you look around for that deal. Here's the Gorilla Glue Gun, also on sale, but again, not specifically a Black Friday sale for 14 bucks. This is my favorite glue gun and I've used several different ones. This one just continually works really well. I've been able to leave it on. My family has left it on for like nights on end. The glue gun still works after that. It barely drips uh, after that. It'll drip a little bit like right when you start, uh, right when you stop using it. But after that, it doesn't drip very much. So I highly recommend this glue gun more than pretty much any other hot glue gun. And um, yeah, you can pick that up, 14 bucks, and you can get it with like some glue sticks and stuff at different prices. And it also has a high and low temperature setting, so if you're ever buying a glue gun, I really recommend getting one that has a high and low setting, because if you, it gives you a lot more versatility when you're crafting, and uh, helps you work on like delicate materials, and then also can give you a longer working time on different things. But when it comes to crafting, your crafts all should start with a plan. And to do that, you're going to want a sketchbook. Here's a two-pack of 5.5 by 8.5 spiral-bound sketchbooks that are on sale. So this is kind of a lot of pages, 200 sheets um, per price, 200 sheets. Um, but uh, basically... Uh, yeah, these are great for like your your plans. Now, I do kind of like using eight and a half by eleven sketchbooks for my project planning. That's sort of my personal preference because I like having the big page to put all my ideas on. But you can also just make it multiple pages long and make those ideas. But these ones are on sale, and you can get two of them, so you're not worried about running running out of one, or maybe you want to have two different kinds of ideas running at the same time, so you don't end up like me, because I actually have, like, my personal sketches and, like, artistic drawings combined in the same sketchbook as, like, my drawings that, like, I'll share on this YouTube channel, so I gotta, like, be careful when I'm flipping the pages, because, like, I'll show a project, and the next one will be, like, this cool thing I drew, uh, about, like, prayer or something, and it'll be, like, all mixed in the same sketchbook, so get multiple sketchbooks for yourself, and, uh, don't fall into that situation. So, the next one is this epoxy. I've used this one to harden both wood. Um, I've put it over top of some fragile wood and made a really nice like sign that was like wood burned and power carved. But then also you can use it to harden your cardboard and make it quite a bit stronger. This is technically like decorative epoxy. Uh, so it's not designed for like gluing things together. I also have used epoxy from like Tight Bond or Gorilla that... Uh, comes in that little tube where it's got like A and B in it. And then when you squeeze it, it pushes them both out. You can mix it together. That's for like gluing stuff together. This is not an adhesive epoxy, epoxy, but I like that it comes with these little cups and these gloves and these sticks because epoxy is really toxic to breathe in. So you want to do it somewhere that's well ventilated and uh, make sure you have the proper equipment. You're not touching the uncured resin, but this can make your projects a lot stronger. This can um, also help you like if you want to actually use the epoxy like it's technically supposed to be used instead of just coating stuff with it you can do that as well but uh, I've used this and enjoy using it and it's a fair deal it's on Black Friday sale right now and you can pick this all up with the links in the description below uh, cutting mats are super important I have an entire video out about how using a cutting mat will give you cleaner cuts in whatever you're cutting on the top and bottom so uh, if you want to check that out, you can. But over here, I have this two-pack of cutting mats. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. I don't really think there's a huge difference in the quality of cutting mats. I personally like Alvin cutting mats. Um, that's the first kind I, I got, and it seems pretty premium and well-made. I've used this 8x12 version for a long time, which you can get out pretty cheap right now. Again, it's not technically on sale, but you can get a 25% coupon, which is going to bring this price way down, and that's pretty good for this 85 by 11 And that size is great for like putting on your desk and then doing like your craft and then being able to take away. I've got this massive cutting mat behind me, and I also have a massive desk, and it 
is not too difficult to transfer it over and put it down on my desk but it's just kind of too big and it's annoying to like swap back and forth um, maybe if you have a permanent crafting desk you could just keep it on there and then you'd be fine but i use the big one when i like go on the floor and want to make big cuts but i actually favor the alvin cutting mat when i can i just actually kind of ruined mine because i used uh our next product a heat gun and then like melted the cutting mat but Anyway, this two pack comes with two different sizes, which is kind of nice. Um, you'll get this smaller one and a bigger one to use. So you can like swap them out, travel around with them. If you destroy one, then you're still okay. And they've got some nice angle markings on there as well uh, for that like protractor shape. The Alvin one only has a couple angles like this. Also, be double check when you're getting a cutting mat, you want it to be in the units that you use. So this one actually is mostly metric and has some inches on it but it's mostly metric which is annoying i should have paid more attention when i was buying that but um the these ones here are in inches and then they have a little centimeters thing right there uh and this alvin version is also in inches but if you're one of my friends from not the united states then uh get yourself a metric cutting mat it'll be a lot more enjoyable now heat guns are one of the most underrated products i think for crafting i use my heat gun all of the time because uh whenever you're hot gluing a heat gun is basically like a tool you can use to um undo your hot glue or make small adjustments once you're done literally if i glue two pieces of cardboard together and they're messed up i can heat gun the whole thing all the car um, hot glue will remelt and I can readjust those or completely peel them back apart, scrape off the hot glue and try to do it again. Or maybe you are trying to glue a really big surface all at once and then you made some mistake and all your glue gets dried before you actually apply the two surfaces together. Well, you can use a heat gun, remelt all of that hot glue and stick it back together. Plus, third one, if you're a recycling person uh, and you like to upcycle things, which is pretty common in our crafting community, um, you can use the heat gun to take hot glue that you have already used but like peeled back off so like little chunks of hot glue and you can remelt them on top of like a large surface if you're going to glue large things together with the heat gun so you never have to put those chunks back through a glue gun like some people try to do um you can just put them on a surface melt them with the heat gun as long as you don't blow them away because it kind of blows like a hair dryer and then stick the two surfaces together upcycling that so right here's this sequin heat gun i've used two different kinds of heat guns this one has been my favorite it's got these two settings i like this big dial on the back for the temperature it doesn't tell you the exact temperature but i don't think that's very important um i don't even know how accurate those exact temperature dials are on like the digital heat guns but it blows really strong. I've used it on many different projects. I've used it on 3D prints to sort of get the hair to go away from it and all kinds of things. So this one's $23 as we ramp up in price. And then our next power tool is the Newmaster Rotary Tool. This one comes in at $30. Um, which is a little bit above our $25 price range, but I think you can bear with me. This is a pretty solid tool to get at $30. I've used this one. Now, I want to draw your attention to this $50 price point right down here. And like I mentioned earlier with our other product, um, this price is not always the real price. If I went, see how there's been eight price changes? Um, if I went and used the Camelizer or Honey, I could probably find that this price was increased right before um, the th product was uh, put on sale. So uh, I've watched it. I know that because I've watched the price over this over time, and it's usually on sale for around $35, $40. So this tool is great for power carving. It comes with the flex shaft, which I appreciate, but because it's a cheaper end tool, it's not like your high quality Dremel brand tool. It, some people call these rotary tools just Dremel in general, but Dremel is a brand and they make the best rotary tools. You can go down in quality a little bit, uh, quite a bit actually. Get this one right here. Um, I like the flex shaft. 
it's not compatible with all of your Dremel accessories. Some of the bits are not very good, but it's 30 bucks instead of like a few hundred. So you could go with this uh, for power carving. And I have one, I've used it, enjoyed it. Um, works pretty well. But uh, if you wanna head, I've got this starter guide down in the description below. Um, and it has all those tools you need. There's a link right down there for you to pick it up. But, um, yeah, if you want to also find some gift ideas, maybe you have a crafter that you know and you're thinking about some gift ideas for them, click or tap on this video right here. I share some uh, tools that are not as common, not and not necessarily on sale right now, but uh, there's some great gift ideas for crafty people, some unique things, or click or tap right here to go ahead and get to that crafting starter guide for cardboard. All right, as always, my name's Eli Tennant. This is Maker Brain, and have a blessed day.